Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. Welcome to Jesus God Incarnate Ministries, where I give you all things Jesus. So if you want some of this, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you know every time I release a video. Also, I have an email in the about section. It's in the about section so you can contact me there. And uh, let me hear any thoughts below, comments, questions, concerns, or anything like that. And if you are blessed by this ministry, consider supporting by cash donations below or products I've made. So, hold on to the video. So, um, I was actually contemplating about making this video because the <laughs> it's the craziest story ever. But I never, ever, ever thought I'd be in this situation. <sighs> but the reason why I humbled myself to make this video is because I thought about the people that need to be saved. So then I immediately put my pride down because I'm, I'm a person that does not. I have a very, 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 and I'm, I'm being just straight up, right? I'm keeping it a butt. So like I have a very tough time on asking for help because I'm such a um, like I can, everything is figure outable. So I usually figure things out, but then this situation is a little weird. It was not weird. It's just, it is what it is, right? So long story short, um, I mean, to put it in one sentence, I got kicked out of my house for preaching the gospel. That's like the long story short. Respectfully, I'm not going to share all the details just because it was, it was my family's house. And there was a whole bunch of things that happened um, in between that like I gotta hash it out first before you know um talking about it but what I can say is um that I mean it's... so my cousin was sent over from where he was to 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 my area and he was on the same mission as me essentially um, God told us both not to work necessarily and to focus on preaching the gospel, witnessing to people and things of that nature. Right. And the devil just happened to use my family to put us in this situation. So, um, so February came out of consecration, right? If you, if you seen the video, I was basically, Fasting two days on, two days off, and it was very, very intense for myself, right? It was intense for myself because when you consecrate for an entire month, like there's there reach a certain point where your flesh gets tired, your emotions get tired, your spirit gets tired, like you, you just get tired, you get exhausted, right? So so but but when you get exhausted, at least for me, that's when God really speaks loud and clear, but then because he was taking me to new levels, I started battling new spirits, right? So, so I was taking to another part of the mountain that has different creatures, different, um, different things that I had to battle. And, 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 and it was, it was an adjustment, right? But it was after the consecration was over that in March, um, <laughs> It's funny thinking about it, but it's not at the same time because it was very recent because <laughs> it was literally just last month that this stuff started happening. But we started getting attacked left and right, like my finances and then just like my car, my cousin's car that I'm in right now um, and just a whole bunch of stuff. If I explained everything, because I like explaining a lot of stuff in detail, this video would be too long. So I'm going to get to the, the nugget, of it, nugget of it. And then I'm going to talk about persecution like after, after I basically. So what I'm asking, this is crazy that I'm actually saying it, but for the sake of the people that will be saved, right? Um, because it's crazy. We've actually been preaching the gospel like every day, like everywhere we're going. And, and I'm not saying this to boast or, or anything. It's just literally God sent us on this mission. So we're just trying to be faithful in, in what like God gave us, right? This is not to say that anybody's not doing their job or whatever it is, because w once you become a kingdom of God, or once you become a part of the kingdom of God and you become a citizen of, of God's kingdom, 
then whatever you do and how you do it, that becomes your ministry, right? So people, they, they, they kind of separate their job from, from ministry. No, 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 no. How you do your job. You showing up, you working with all of your might, you um, you serving the people, you teaching the people, you cleaning whatever you're cleaning, you uh, managing whatever you're supervising, whatever you're super. That is your ministry, right? They're all like, you know, I have to go into full time ministry and leave my family. Ah, your family's your ministry, bro. Come on now. Come on, man. I got to keep it a book, right? I got to keep it a book. Everything you do is a part of your ministry. Everything you do is a part of your ministry, right? So, so, so I, I just had to say that, but basically what I'm saying is, uh, this is crazy that I'm saying. It. If you are able to send any donations, whatever small amount, what, whatever amount, and be wise and be led of the spirit, if God doesn't impress it on your heart to send money to help us for the situation, don't send it. <laughs> like, just I'm just keeping it a book, right? Like, we're like, the, see, like you have to be led of the. If it, it, it if it's in your heart to be a generous person, go ahead. If you have something to give, go ahead. But if you're led of God not to give, don't do it. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm fine. I've been homeless before. Like, it's crazy, right? Like, I, I've, I've been homeless a few times in my life, uh, as a family, a couple times, and then. Uh, but as myself when I was like 19 or something, right? It was, it was, it was when I was going crazy, like over a decade ago and all that stuff. But basically I'm asking for donations. So, um, we can somehow, some way try to figure out, cause there's a bunch of loose ends. We got to figure out that won't take too much. Like basically we're just trying to, um, get enough to get a rental so we could start doing odd jobs because the car we have now we have to sell it for spiritual spiritually tied purposes to unclean things and the car that i have we have to get rid of that so um so and w which which prevents us from a lot of things because this car has mechanical issues that are fixable but it's just because of the spiritual warfare like if i really broke down everything that happened <laughs> just in the last two weeks oh my gosh is almost unbelievable like it's almost unbelievable even to me right i'm i'm in a state of oh um, not disbelief but more like how can all this happen in two weeks bro <laughs> oh man it's so crazy one day i'm gonna make a video explaining like a lot of this stuff it's just because i'm in the middle of a storm it's it's um it's it, I, 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 it's it's hard. It's better that I just look back at it and make a video after we're out of this situation. Right. But that's what I'm basically asking. If if it doesn't hurt you and if you are led by God, consider those two. Like, I, I don't want you to just send it just because you feel bad for us. Ah! Like, no, 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 no. If you're led of God and if your heart or, or conscience is like send money for whatever it is, go ahead. But, um, so <laughs> this is actually crazy that God is teaching me specifically in, in this lesson. Um, like when the devil, okay, listen, 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 no matter how small or big the persecution is, whether it be family, friends, um, at your workplace, at your church is crazy at church, bro. It actually happens at church, bro. Oh my gosh. It actually happens at church. No matter what level it is, right? I would, I would, I would add that the devil is afraid, right? Under all the anger and wrath and like determination, right? That he has, he's actually scared. Like, Think about it. He knows where he's going. He has full understanding where he's going. Like, who wouldn't be... Look, okay, so in, in, in Psalms, right? I think it says in, in a couple different places. It says, um, the fool in his heart says there is no God. And the context behind it isn't like you're claiming atheism. No, no, no. It's you are aware of God, although you act and move 
uh, and 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 operate in your sin or whatever it is, aware of him, but you're like, basically like, nah, he's not gonna do anything. Like you have no fear of God, right? So 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 you're basically doing the the sin or whatever lifestyle it is without fear of the consequence of what would take place, right? So so like imagine okay so so now imagine how the world is right now right the world america the western the western world and all that stuff even even like first second the entire world let me just bunch it all together the entire world right has evil going on that is just like do you not have fear of god <laughs> like like let's just keep it a buck right when you got like Grown people killing grown people for the sake of whatever thing it is, whether it be food, status, joining a gang, or whatever it is. You have grown people doing that to other people. They literally do not fear. Like, you took a whole human life, bro. What are you talking about, right? So, there's people that steal from family members from churches from from this from this there's there's people that like sell their soul to the devil like i it is beyond i mean it's not beyond me i actually crazy to think actually that when i was homeless and going crazy and all that stuff i was actively looking for the devil to sell my soul to him so that one is not beyond me <laughs> that one's not beyond me that's the part where it's like like my my soul was destroyed almost. It was like my conscience was was almost seared to where like the fear of the consequence, right? I didn't conceptualize eternal separation as a real thing. I conceptualized it as an idea. Right? Which which gave me the justification to be like, "Oh, where's the devil? I need to sell my soul." Like, this is what really happened in my life when I was 19. Right? So, like, there's no fear of God before the people's eyes on earth. And when there's no fear of God before your eyes, literally sin is justified. How do you think that, like, you have to understand. This is how the devil was able to sin even in heaven. Pride got in the way and blinded him, blinded his heart, blinded his eyes, blinded his mind. And then the justification of sin and denying your very heavenly father can be done. Right? Think about how heaven and earth were the same in terms of sin was able to enter in because there was sin found in heaven. Sin was found on earth. Like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But God is going to make it so that will never, ever, 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 ever happen again. This is... As soon as I understood this, and like I said, this is just for me, right? God gives to whoever, to whomever he gives to. And God dispenses whatever amount of faith, whatever situation that he put you in for your sake, right? It's just, I happen to be in this situation and this is, this is what I asked of God. As soon as I understood what I was saved from, almost everything, and I mean, I still sometimes be asking God, why is it me? But somebody has to hold my mantle, right? It might as well be me, right? It might as well be me. So, so, um, so, as soon as I understood that I was saved from eternal separation from my heavenly father, I was like, oh, crap. There are other human beings that are still not saved. What do I need to do to get them saved, right? So so I threw up some dangerous prayers. <laughs> I threw up some dangerous prayers, right? Then 
I reached a point where then God took me through a whole bunch of stuff. And then it, <laughs> it was crazy because it was it was literally just last year that the persecution started. I think I made a video literally last year when I pretty much stopped working and started doing ministry. And then and then I made a video where like I didn't say all the things that were going on. You got to understand there was a lot more going on that I did not say on that video. But uh, like somebody threw an egg at my door and it was but it was like, like I said, there was a lot more going on than just somebody threw an egg at my window or at, at my door a couple times. There was like and, and, and that's the part where like. Out of like just out of like it's not as important as the gospel being preached. Like me talking about all the persecution, that's not as important as, as as me witnessing to people. Like it's 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 not as important as you witnessing to people. Cause like I'll wear my persecution on my sleeve. That's fine. But are people getting saved? Like that's that's really what it comes down to. Like are people getting saved? Ah ah ah! This that's me inside my spirit. Like, what can I do? What can I do? But then obviously, like you, you get led of the spirit and stuff like that. Whatever else, right? Um, but coming back to like the persecution that's going on, and after understanding, right? And then after like straight up just preaching and doing ministry. The persecution, for some reason, just went through the roof. And I'm like, bruh, now I'm getting persecuted in my own house. I'm getting persecuted by friends and family. I'm getting persecuted. It's the craziest thing. Like, when you read the scriptures, and then a part of the scriptures start happening to you, and you're just like, oh, as it is written, right? You, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world, right? Blessed are you if you get persecuted for, like Matthew 5, I think it's like chapter, uh, verse 12, where it's like, uh, blessed are you if people make up all false kind of things about you in my name's sake, for great is your reward in heaven. When you go through that in real life, bruh, it is the most baffling thing ever. Because when, as it is written, he did not come to bring a, bring peace, but a sword. Dividing family members, dividing friends, dividing this, dividing this, dividing this, even dividing church members, bro. It's still shocking. Like I, to this day, I do not know how to wrap my mind around it. That like, I don't even. I didn't realize Dang, bro, y'all really, y'all really seen a grown man tear up. I look, listen, when I was 14, I had this vision of myself. I was in high school. I was in 10th grade. I had a vision of myself. I was walking in the hallways in like the high school hallways, right? All of a sudden, I'm, I'm 14. This is like before I, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I look up and then like I see myself on a cross, dirty and naked, like crucified. Right. I was like, oh, well, I guess so. And I just keep walking. Right. But it's 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 weird. Even it, it's hard at the same time. And I know that I asked for this, but. It's really hard for me to wrap my mind around the amount of pain that Jesus went through. Because we're talking, this is just my life. This is just me picking up my cross and following him. I could only imagine the Lord God Almighty while he's on earth, who has like a full understanding 
of sin, separation. Like when, when it says that, like, like he, he looked at the city and then he wept bitterly. Like Jesus wept bitterly because of their, their unbelief, their hard hearts. He couldn't do any miracles there. Like, it's tough, bro. It's tough. Because as you deepen yourself in God, your flesh body ain't going away. You're going to have your moments where you fall or whatever it is, right? You ask for forgiveness, pick up your cross, keep going. Like, like I'll, I'll say it like this. From a very wise uh, child of God, it's not about your situation. It's not about your pain. It's not about uh, uh, like you you helping your neighbor. It it's about the John that you're gonna talk to in two months that's supposed to commit suicide, but you happen to be obe obedient to God, and then God sends you, and then they don't even know that it was sent to it, that you were sent by God to talk to them, and and you talk about something that you normally talk about, and and, and then and they don't commit suicide. It's not about your financial situation. It's literally not about whatever, like, it's not about your job. It's about Susan. It's about Barbara. It's about Joseph. It's, a, it's that person that you're supposed to meet two years from now. That's who it's about. That you're supposed to be a seed. To, or you're supposed to be someone that's either watering a seed, planting a seed, or God uses you to cause the increase. Because God does the increase. Only God does the increase. He might use you to do the increase. You might say something nonchalant. You might be told to say something specific. You might be sent and put on your heart out of nowhere to share the gospel to this person that you've worked with for three or four years. It's not about you. It's not about your family. It's not about your kids. It's about that future family that you're going to get sent to, to, to go talk to about God. That you're one of the many uh, chess piece moves that God uses to win them over to the, to, to the gospel. Does that make sense? That's the wisdom that she gave me. It's not about us. It is written, deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow him. The thing is, daily, we live day by day, whether we, whether you want to or not. The sun goes up and the sun comes down. New day, new night. Right? So it's like, that. that that's why, that, 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 and the craziest part about this whole thing Though we're in such spiritual warfare, for the life of me, I do not understand why God is increasing our joy. You see what I'm saying? Like, what I'm going through doesn't make sense to me. Like, it, it, it literally doesn't. Right? It's like, I know that God has a plan. I just never thought at 14 years old that I'd be this dude preaching the gospel. And the very thing that I'm doing is saving souls from an eternal separation from our heavenly father. And because of that, I become homeless? This makes no sense to me. <laughs> it literally makes no sense to me, bro. I have no, like, so it's like, so in the midst of all this trials, scripture is starting to make sense in a different way. In like certain scripture, I guess I should say. Like the persecution, it's 
not, not even just the persecution. Screw the persecution for like two seconds. The sheer spiritual warfare makes sense. But it's like, for telling the truth, the devil's been attacking us <laughs> left and right. Trust me, I'm going to probably make a video and I'm going to break it down with my cousin. What was going on? Because <laughs> y'all got to really hear this. Somebody got to hear it in the future. I'll share a little bit of it, but <laughs> I'm going to have to sit down and make like an hour video with my cousin who's homeless with me and break down all the things. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll share a little bit. So I had to get rid of the car that I got from a family member. And um, because of spiritually tied reasons, whatever else, the car breaks down, right? It's drivable, but it's not, it, it's like, it'd be unwise for me to drive it, right? I could drive it. It'd just be unwise because I don't know if the wheel's going to fall off, right? <laughs> so the wheel might fall off any given time. Boom. So I had this, uh, I, it, God puts it on my heart. I'm just going to give, I'm going to give it to the dude because I went to a Les Schwab locally and then the dude broke it like, he, oh, yeah, this, this and this, this and this. Because I was going to get an alignment at first. But he was like, oh, actually, there's this thing right here. Uh, and I was like, OK. All right. Fine. That's cool. So I guess I should give some backstory. God told me not to work. I had bills, payments, and other things from credit card and all, all, all this other stuff that I couldn't keep up with. I had to drain a whole bunch of my accounts just to try to pour into it. I finally got uh, uh, my my Roth IRA shut down, so they gave me the check from that. Uh, my credit card got shut down. My bank got shut down. And then my other bank got shut down because I, I, I literally, I, I'm literally just looking at God like, bro, like, so, all right. He knows what he's doing, and I just got to give it up to him, right? So, boom, I get the check from the Roth IRA, and then I plan to get that check, fix up the car, start doing like Uber Eats or like some kind of uh, like delivery driver dr driving stuff to make like mm, anywhere from a thousand to like fifteen hundred a week, right? If if because because I I just know how it is like like you know um, how to do all that stuff, and then and then pretty much. Uh, I was going to do that. And then it just thing after thing kept coming up thing after thing. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Now I can't drive the car. Now I got to do this. Now I got to do this. Now I got to do this. Right. And then, um, and then it was like, then I start getting persecuted on my mom's house. And then I get start, and then I get started getting persecuted for my friends and other, and other people that I know. Right. It, it's just, it pretty much getting called a bum. You're not working. Da, da, da. Bro. Look, listen, let me keep it a buck, bro. I can work like 16 hours a, a, a day and I'm fine. Like I, I've done it multiple. I'm not no lazy bum, right? It's just, I'm trying to be obedient to God. So basically I get to the point where, um, I get to the point where pretty much the money that I have is drained. And then it, it's hard to, to explain it without being sporadic because so many little things happened that, just add it on to like the fiery darts of Satan, you know, just pew, 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 right? It was like almost anywhere I was going, it was like I was getting hit by like something, right? Uh, my dreams, I, I couldn't sleep, right? Like uh, at night, I couldn't sleep. Uh, God's giving me understanding of the scriptures more. So, so, so I'm, I'm becoming uh, similar to like Jeremiah, like the weeping prophet in terms of uh, or, or I guess like just as it's described as of Jesus that um, he's a man acquainted with grief and sorrow. Right. And just like it says in Ecclesiastes, I think it's third. No, one thirteen, I think it, it says with wisdom comes comes grief and with knowledge, with much wisdom comes grief and with much, much knowledge comes sorrow. Right. So I started becoming like that where I started becoming like started understanding more. of the importance of preaching and getting people saved and all that stuff. And then I get to a point where now the car breaks down. Now I can't use it. And then it's like, like, yeah, there's, all right. So I'll explain this. We're supposed to get a rental, right? This happened just like last week. We're supposed to get a rental, 
but we go get a rental at uh, at the airport. When we're at the airport, they're like, you need a, a credit card with your name on it. Boom. All right, cool. I got a credit card with my name on it. But because I haven't been paying my stuff for like the last six months, which because God was like, don't work. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> right? It was like, um, they said, you need, you need a credit. We had the money, right? Because my, my cousin went to go get a check, his, his check, right? Right. He, he went to go get it. We had enough for a rental for like a whole week. So we could just start doing Uber Eats and all that stuff. Right. And then, um, it got to a point where it's, it's, it's freaking crazy. It got, it got to a point where he, uh, I, 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 I put, I put the money that we had and I paid off the credit card to bring it up to balance. Cause I missed like six, like I was late on like six cycles or something like that. It, it was a long, it's like six months ago. I stopped paying it. Right. But, um, but because it was not in good standing, we have to wait a month and a half for it to get cleared with the credit bureaus. So I could use that money that we put on there. And I'm just like, bro, what the heck, bro? And, and so imagine that story, but things like that happening, like every single day, but not just randomly. It's whenever we make progress in trying to go and be able to preach the gospel and be not like couch surf or not be in hotels, right? Like, like this is, this is what I mean. Like the spiritual warfare was so and it's still going on now, right? Um, and that's why I haven't been posting videos, right? Like I got like a whole bunch of a whole bunch of wisdom that I want to tell y'all. Like I got a whole bunch of knowledge that I'm trying to really break down, but I can't do it because I'm trying to figure out the situation, right? So that's yeah, it's it's crazy to to think that I'd ever be in this situation. Like it, it just tears me apart of how it, of how it happened. But the craziest part is, right, the reason why I'm not too, like, bogged down about it is because it was prophesied to me that these things would take place. It was prophesied to me that I would be separated from certain people of the church. It was already prophesied. That's why I'm like, crap. There's certain church members that I can't talk to right now because I'm not supposed to. So God allowed whatever happened to happen for that to take place. That's the craziest part. That half the stuff going on right now, <laughs> it was told to me before it was going to happen. <laughs> That's why I'm chilling in terms of like, it, it's just, it's weird. It's weird, right? That God would allow this to happen. Like, <laughs> But I know God is good. And there's other things that were prophesied to me that are going to take place, but just not yet. Right. So it's like, hopefully if I get this figured out, um, I'll start making videos in like the, the hotel rooms, at least as, as, as soon as we have like, uh, like enough money to get a rental and then enough money to pretty much just go off of that. Yeah. I, I'm going to start uploading. Cause like, Pretty much what I'm doing now is just we're preaching, we're witnessing, and then we're just working on ourselves in terms of uh, kind of waiting for God. Like, yeah, the, the spiritual warfare is heavy. What I would say is if anyone has reached this point, please pray for all the seeds that were already planted, that were already planted and for God to either send water to it or for God to cause the increase because we've preached to like a lot of people already, right? Cause, cause we, we, we go in the crowds and then we also go like individually as well. Right. Um, so, so pray that God, uh, causes, causes those seeds, uh, the things that like pray that God, um, also goes before us because we pray too, but it's, it's, it's helpful if, if you guys as well pray. Um, 
go before us and prepare the ears of those that shall still receive the gospel. We're still going to do this regardless, right? Like half the people that we witness to, they don't know that we're homeless, right? <laughs> they don't know. It's fine. It's, it's, it, it doesn't matter if they know, right? Are they receiving the gospel? Are they receiving the truth? That's the one thing that's on my mind and in my heart and spirit. That's just, there's this urgency in my spirit. I got to go tell these people like me every day when I wake up, I'm thinking about the people that I witnessed to think about the people that, that I preached to and the people, then the people that we're going to preach to and going to witness to. And I'm like asking God, like almost every day now I'm asking God, send us somebody. Who do we got to witness to? Like literally this is real life, right? So pray that God, um, prepares the hearts. There we go. That's right. Prepare the hearts of those that will be preached to prepare the hearts of those that uh that they may receive the truth and the truth shall set them free i'm gonna pray for you guys right now just because i know that i know god done he's moved lord jesus i shift the atmosphere right now to whomever is watching I pray right now that you invade their hearts and their minds and their souls, Lord Jesus, and their bodies, Lord Jesus. Fill their spirit more with the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. May you send angels, Lord Jesus, to worship around the house. May you cleanse their house in the name and blood of Jesus Christ, the living God. May you go before them right now. I break any covenant done in the name of Jesus in the house. I protect the person, Lord Jesus, that is of the truth and of the gospel, Lord Jesus, that even if they are in a house where a covenant uh, has been made with Satan, that you at least protect them. May you save yourself a remnant, Lord Jesus, in each and every single house. And if the entire house is of the remnant, may you bless them and catapult them, Lord Jesus, into the calling that they need to go, Lord Jesus. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for supernatural provision supernatural favor, supernatural wisdom, supernatural knowledge, discernment, and understanding, Lord Jesus. May you elevate them like, like I look, listen, Jesus, we are in a time where, as I have said more recently, we really don't have time for all these things. Lord Jesus, catapult them into new faith. Ac accelerate their gifts, Lord Jesus. Accelerate the destiny that is to come with them, Lord Jesus. Accelerate all the, accelerate the favor that they see within the, that other people have in their eyes, whether at the workplace, whether at, at schools, whether um, at home, whether um, like in public, wherever they go, Lord Jesus. If they're shopping for a car, if they're shopping for food, if they're shopping for clothes, Lord Jesus, I pray that you get super supernaturally lord jesus i pray that you plant spiritual seeds i establish oh thank you jesus thank you i establish a pillar in every single house of every true believer filled with the holy spirit that is watching right now filled with the holy spirit i establish a pillar lord jesus a pillar of fire a spiritual pillar of fire by night and a, 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 a pillar, like some, whatever you want to, of, uh, of cloud by day to protect them. Mark the house, Lord Jesus, that this is a house of God. If I, if I may speak, send a spiritual hose so that you can douse any satanic fire that is there that is burning and all that stuff. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I release visions and dreams and prophecies just as it is written. In the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Lord Jesus, 
fill the ones that are listening that don't have the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I anoint this video in the name of Jesus. I pray over this video in the name of Jesus that the power of this speech, Lord Jesus, shall be carried onto the, the waves. It shall be, it shall pierce the ears into the hearts, down to the soul, all the way to the spirit, Lord Jesus, that they should see and they should hear hear and know and taste that the Lord is good, that God is our provider. God is our shepherd. God is our protector. God is our fortress. God is our rock that we stand on. And surely, just as it is written, he is faithful and true. And he has a name written on his thigh, the word of God that no one knows but himself. And he wages holy war and he comes through and he divides those who think they believe in God and those who believe in God. I I pray right now in the name of Jesus that all the children of God watching this are going to be blessed so much that they will be shocked. They will look at 2025 and be like, how the heck did I get here? How did I get promoted all the way to this level? How did I receive this car when and nobody, nobody even gave me a thing? I just pulled up with a new car. How the heck did I just speak to this person and they start breaking down and crying and I shared the gospel? How the heck did this happen? How did my mom uh, uh, forgive. How did these people reconcile? I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I break every chain off every single child of God. I pray that right now in the name of Jesus, if there are soul fragments, Lord Jesus, if there is soul damage, Lord Jesus, if there's physical healing that needs to be done, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, you touch them and by their faith they shall be healed. In the name of Jesus, I pray for anybody, all the people that I've met, Lord Jesus, that we've witnessed to in the last three to four weeks, Lord Jesus. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you send them out, that you go forth before us, that you are the one that, that holds the heavens in his hands. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus for family reconciliation. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for bitter hearts to be made good. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for unforgiveness to be undone and for them to seek the face of God. Jesus Christ, be with their lips be with their heart so that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Lord Jesus, right now, I pray that all the remnant that I've been connected to in the last six months see supernatural favor like they've never seen before. Not just financially, Lord. No, I mean in the things of God. May you increase their joy so much. May you increase their peace so much. May you increase their self-control. May you increase their gentleness. May you increase their, their, their holiness. May you increase their spiritual maturity that they will be shocked and they will walk in confidence. They will walk in boldness. They will pray in boldness. They will, they will walk into the, their, their room or not their room. They will walk into um, their workplace and people will know that something is different about this girl. Something is different about this woman. Something is different about this man. Something is different about this boy. Something is different about this child. Who do you serve? I pray right now in the name of Jesus that that is the question that's on the unbelievers hearts of all the remnant that I have been connected to Lord Jesus that other people shall come to them and say who do you serve who is your God what how are you able to do this how can you smile right now how can you do this how did you go from zero to hero like this how did you do this what do you do you go to church what do you do and I pray in the name of Jesus that you open up ways and doors that they can witness Lord Jesus I um Thank you, Jesus. I decree and I declare right now in the name of Jesus that you don't just open doors, Lord Jesus, but that you open gates, Lord Jesus, because behind those gates are many doors. In Jesus' name, I pray today and today, and yes, again, today is the day of salvation. I pray somebody goes. I pray somebody is sent to them. I pray somebody gets saved. I pray the Holy Spirit falls on them. I pray for a healing on in the name of Jesus. I pray a restoration in the name of Jesus. I pray that these gates open left and right because behind those gates, Lord Jesus, are multiple doors in the name of Jesus. These things I seal in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I pray right now in the altar of God, in, in the altar of God, I place all the things that they have in the altar of God. Purify it, Lord Jesus. Purify their house. Purify their cars. Purify their tongues. Purify their hearts. Purify 
purify their minds, Lord Jesus. Purify their uh, purify their work relationships. Purify their regular relationships. Anything that they have, Lord Jesus. That is tainted of the devil in any kind of way. I, I put it into the altar of God. And I pray that you turn up the heat. So just like gold, all the impurities shall fall off. Purify their wallets. Purify their, uh, what else, Lord Jesus? Purify every single aspect of their life. Purify the way that they think about themselves. Yes, Jesus. I come against any thoughts of doubt. Any thoughts of condemnation. Any thoughts of shame. For you are a child of God. Remnant that is listening to this. All remnants. Not not just the one I've been connected to. All remnants that have reached this point of the video. You are a child of God. And I declare and I decree that condemnation shall not have a grip on you right now. Shame shall let go right now. Uh, uh, anything, Lord Jesus. Because we serve the... Li mm. Jesus is, we serve the living God. We serve the living God. Again, I say we serve the living God. And because we serve the living God, he high, He can move through times and times and times. He can move through through space and, and dimensions, Lord Jesus. He is the God above every God. He is the God that given us his son. He's the God that sent himself down in the form of Jesus. He's the God that shed his blood on the cross that we should be made the righteousness of God. It is written, that he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. And I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you give our children, give your children, Lord Jesus, the confidence to stand on the word of God, that the living God backs up the Bible. The living God backs up our prayers. The living God backs up our finances. The living God backs up our peace. The living God backs up our joy for he makes us complete. For it was, it was what he did, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you are with all the people that have heard this prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus that you supernaturally go before us, that we should taste and see your goodness like never before. In Jesus' mighty name and in Jesus, I seal these things. Amen. Well, uh, seems like God is really moving. Well, I think that's the end of the video. So, <laughs> if these videos bless you, like, subscribe, share, you know the rest. Peace.